Hey you folks, Quilly Team here and welcome to some more Let's Play Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. This is my favorite true roguelike game that there is. I just, I, I find it's the perfect balance of, of length and mechanics and gameplay. Uh, really, really, really enjoy playing this one. Played it yesterday. Oh, well, I don't know when this video will go live, but in, in, in my real time, played it yesterday on the stream because we had some technical issues with um, Civilization, and it was a ton of fun to do. But that run did end, and it ended in the same way that every single run of Dungeon Crawl ends. Here's the thing. There's, I mean, while there is, there's some luck and RNG and things like that in this game, um, I do really feel that they've done a good job, and this was always a design goal for Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, that every death in this game should sort of feel like your fault. Um, and that is the case. Generally speaking, one or two things kill me. Um, it's, it's inattentiveness or impatience, and that's really what it comes down to, and that's what happened last time too, or yesterday too, but we played for 2.5 hours straight, so here, I'm gonna, I set a timer, I'm gonna make sure to take proper pauses to reset my brain in between, because that's what happens, you sort of get tired and you're like, oh, it'll be fine, I'll just go for it, I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna play here, I mean, I'm playing on, uh, one of the web servers. By the way, if you don't know, this game is 100% free, you can download it for, you know, Windows, Mac, all kinds of different platforms and things like that. It's available on a bunch of like uh, mobile and things like that too nowadays. It's pretty amazing. Or you can play it on the web. I like playing it on the web because uh, you can interact with other people's ghosts and various things like that. Um, I'm gonna play on version 0.23 as opposed to the trunk version because I actually haven't been uh, keeping up uh, with the changes. So far it's been a while since I played so I actually don't know what the trunk. Trunk is like the current in development version of things. So I'm uh, gonna go ahead and play on that. If you check the link in the doobly-doo, there will be a link to my uh, crawl rc file over here which allows us to customize things so we are going to play as the same thing i played on the stream i do want to do a centaur hunter which is actually my last game on this one um we're going to play as uh, what we tried to play on the stream we're going to be playing as a halfling and in dungeon crawl your species is the thing that really determines the most about what your character is like because your species determines what your skill aptitudes are the next step here the background just determines your starting loot um and i like the idea of starting with the warper so that we start with a book um with the um uh with the blinking spell in it we also start with the scroll of blinking the big value with that in addition to just having a scroll of blinking which is one of the most powerful scrolls to keep around is that if you start with it identified so that you don't have to blind read a scroll later and waste one of your scrolls of blinking. So it's almost like getting two scrolls of blinking for free when you start as a warper background over here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with the short sword and there we go. So the first thing we're going to do is, of course, set our skills that we're going to research <clears throat> or, or focus on learning. Um, I'm going to start off. I'm just going to turn on short blades over here. We did in the stream, I also started with dodging, and I'll probably turn dodging on pretty quickly, but we're going to work on trying to get a short blades skill up uh, as quickly as possible. Or maybe what I'll do is I'll focus it and also turn on dodging. I kind of like that idea. So, of your skills, and if you hit the asterisk here, these are all the skills in the game. You can see the aptitudes here. Um, skills with negative aptitudes train slower. Skills with positive aptitudes train faster. Basically, every time you, you kill a creature, you get experience points. And the experience points go towards your leveling up. But leveling up basically just gives you more hit points. Uh, it is is kind of sort of the biggest thing. A little bit more mana, some hit points, and then also um, some more spell slots. But the XP, in addition to just going to your raw level, also gets distributed to the skills you're training. And if you're only training one skill, all the XP will go to that one skill. If you're training two, it'll get split between the two, and so on and so forth. Especially if you're on manual mode for the training like I am over here, which is definitely recommended. If you do play with the, the crawl RC file that I use, that's what's going to be set up. Um, so as a halfling, we are not great spellcasters. Um, the base spellcasting skill is not the most critical in a sense. Um, ranks in spellcasting gives you more magic, gives you more spell slots, also generically improves all your spell casting a, a, a little bit. Um, but you can also just focus on individual things. So as a halfling, we actually are decent at charms and translocation. And the elemental magic at a zero is, is fine. Uh, but we're obviously not going to want to do transmutations at a minus four. That's pretty bad. Um, invocations, which is sort of god powers, got a plus one. Evocations, which is using magic items as a zero, is pretty decent. Stealth plus two. We are a small species as well, getting eight bonuses to stealth and evasion. Um, 
But yeah, and weapon wise, uh, short blades does cross train with long blades, but we'll probably just use the short blades unless we find a, like a crazy early artifact long blade, we might use that. We could also consider using an axe or a mace or flail if we found some sort of really crazy artifact item. It wouldn't be too bad, I don't know. Um, but really we're quite good at range, in particular slings at a plus four. I'm gonna focus on the short blades first, but the slings will provide us some long range kill potential later on, which is gonna be great. And amazingly, I, I'm, I'm always surprised the plus one armor aptitude for the uh, halflings and, and the shield as well. So defensively, we're gonna be in pretty decent shape. Um, most likely we're gonna stick to, you know, probably lighter armor so that we can make use of some of our spells as a get out of jail free card. But it is entirely possible for us to switch to a pure sort of heavy armor setup and forego spell casting. Um, and just go sort of tank mode. If we find something kind of crazy good, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, we'll start with the focus on short blades. I'm gonna set a skill target on my short blades of 10. Oops, I did that wrong. Um, skill target B, 10. Uh, for our for short swords, we actually want a 12, um, but daggers is at a 10. If we hit 10 and we're still using short swords, we'll just change it probably to a 12. If you don't know, we hit I over here for the inventory and take a look at our short swords. All weapons, so when you train a weapon skill, you become more accurate and do better damage and stuff with it. But one of the big things, in fact, the most significant thing about training a weapon skill is that it reduces the time it takes to do an attack. So the default amount of time uh, for an attack short sword is 1.1 sort of ticks, or I think they're often referred to as aughts in this game or something like that. Um, sort of moving, generally speaking, moving one tile uses is 1.0. That's sort of base, you know, unit of movement. So, um, and most monsters attack on a, like a 1.0 kind of thing, well, it depends, but anyway um so at a 1.1 .1, uh with the short sword if we were untrained sometimes monsters might be able to like get two wax at us in between swings but once we get to skill level 12 with the short blade we reach its minimum delay of 0.5 so effectively we might be able to swing twice for every monster swing again this is very sort of like fuzzy wuzzy um and depends on situations but it's really good and that's why like your, your priority with weapon tends to be to reach the minimum attack delay um and then after that, the training becomes less important. Yeah, you you know, yeah, you're a little bit better with the weapon, but you're probably better off just training, say, pure fighting, which can help those stats as well as gives you more hit points, or just training more just dodge and armor skill or whatever to up your defenses, for example. So anyway, we'll do that. Uh, we also start with five Tomahawks of Dispersal, which will be a good sort of defensive option, plus zero leather armor the Scroll of Blinking, and the Ration. And we also start with a spell book that's got a few spells. Blink and Shroud of Golubria are going to be priorities for us to learn. The rest is really not going to be a huge priority for us. We'll see. We do have to be level two before we start, um, before we memorize that, so that's going to be okay. Um, and in the run, I had wanted to go and become a Cleric of Gozag on our stream. It took us forever to find a, a temple for it. I'm still tempted to do that because I'm sort of curious how that feels. But the thing is, I'm not going to lie, it does make the run a little harder. The, 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 I think for this, the easiest thing to do would be to go to Okuaru. Um, but I go Okuaru all the time. And um, I'm trying to force myself to avoid that. But I think this run would be a lot easier with it. Um, or Fetus wouldn't be too bad. Anyway, uh, I'm going to enable picking up of stones, needles, and sling bullets as well, so that um, we will start collecting them for whenever we do get a sling. We'll mostly use some auto explorer over here. And in terms of first uh, enemies, we've got a bat and a rat. It's going to be fairly easy. The bat's going to be annoying, but not too bad. I'm just going to stand in place and let the bat come to me. If I try to move towards it, there's going to be a lot of... I'll move forward, it'll attack me, and then run away. Oops, didn't mean to do that. So generally speaking, you want to let enemies come to you. All right, go and pick that up. I'll just rest up and go. Ring mail over here. If, again, we, we don't know, we, we're going to have to be fairly flexible based on what we find on this particular run. Um, we don't know what kind of armor we might end up with. Okay, the dart slug can be kind of sketchy. He's slow, but he's got a good range attack. Just trying to hit the bat while it's around. There we go. Most likely we can do this. We can always run away and pillar dance away from the uh, dark slug, dart slug. Just going to wait here. Actually, wait here. Move up. There we go. Um, it, it has crap for, for melee attack, but it can it can cast a magic dart that does, like, I think seven damage at, at the max. We only got 14 HP right now. Short blade skill goes up. We've reached level two. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to memorize Blink and memorize Shroud of Galubria. Um, right now, we've got... 16% failure on Blink, which is way too much. Now that we have the, the spells memorized, I can start studying translocations. Um, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off dodging temporarily. And I'm going to turn on translocation. Actually, I'll turn on spellcasting, mostly because it annoys me that it's an odd level. I'm just going to set spellcasting target of two, just to round it off. It, it makes no difference. They, they've, um, as far as I know, none of the skills, they all give like some bonus to in an equation, but there's no like break points for things, generally speaking. Uh, maybe mana uh, uh, or something for spellcasting, I'm not sure. But I'm going to get it to two. Even though it's got minus three aptitude, you need so little XP for the first few levels of skills, it really doesn't hurt. Translocations, um, we're going to set a goal of probably something like six. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll set a goal of five. It's partially going to depend on what items we're wearing at any given time, how much skill we need in this to bring the failure rate down. But we'll see what happens when we get to that point. I'll keep the focus on short blades, but we'll get a few ranks of that. Um, I'm going to go, first of all, I'm going to change when I've got quivered here, stones, so I can always just throw stones. Might get lucky and do a little bit of damage, also good for waking things up. Another dart slug here. I'm just going to hide around the corner, wait for it to show up, and then... See, see, that does a lot of damage. That's not what I want to do. I want to... Forgot. What, yesterday when we played, we played on the standalone client. Because when I was streaming, I didn't want to play on a server. Because if anyone, everyone jumps on the server, it starts to slow down. But I do prefer playing on the web here. And I forgot. Not all the mouse controls work. Uh, so yeah, it mainly... It's only got three bite. But yeah, if it hits the slug dart, it can do seven damage. And that can be kind of painful. But we should be okay here. And arrest. And yeah, the bat's gonna wake up. We are gonna get some points in stealth um, for sure, and, and not too far away. That was dumb. What was I doing moving forward? You don't wanna move forward into a big room like that that you don't have vision, because you don't know how many uh, enemies might be hiding in there. You wanna pull enemies back. How are you doing so much damage to me? You don't even have a weapon. One hit should kill you. This should be fine. The problem that we're gonna face after we kill this guy is the lizard. Eh, it's only hits for three. Oh, right, it's not a gecko, so I can actually run. If we if we take a little bit too much damage, I can sort of run and kite backwards. If that had been a gecko, a leopard gecko, I would have been very scared because they are fast um, and you can't really retreat them. That's a funny room. Huh. All right, staircase, picking up some scrolls. Of course, this being a true roguelike and things, we don't know what the scroll that is. Um... Scrolls and potions are randomized every run. Hello, Vampiric Short Sword. That's interesting. Um, we're going to pick it up. So, Vampiric Short Sword, when we hit someone with the Vampiric weapon, um, we drain some life and, and it can heal ourselves. So, obviously, we'd want to wear it. Except when you unwield it, you will be drained. Draining is an effect that. Um, effectively lowers, like, all your skills by a certain amount. Um, it goes away after a while, uh, basically as you gain XP. And I believe while you're drained, you still gain XP normally, but the XP also is, like, every time you gain XP, it also reduces the drain amounts. So whenever we unequip this Vampiric Short Sword, we're going to suck for a while. No pun intended. Is it worth equipping... It is, it is quite powerful, but I don't know if I want to lock into it. Now, if it had... Okay, the jackal is a little scary. Okay, he's alone. Um, you can get packs of jackals. Now, I don't know if dungeon level 1 will tend to have it, but packs of jackals, they move fast, and yeah, they can be in large groups, and this is a big open area where I can't necessarily just fight one at a time in a hallway. Uh, if that uh, vampiric short sword was like, you know, plus 2 or something like that, I'd be tempted to... Um, I'd be tempted to equip it right now. A jackal. Oh, there's a jackal over there. The question mark um, that you saw there indicates that creature is awake, but wasn't 100% aware of me yet. Um, it, and depending on why it's there, if it was following a sound or whatever, and depending on my, my stealth rating, it, it could have just wandered away, um, or even it might have been possible for me to get a stab on it without it noticing. All right, we're level three. We get a stat boost over here. Now, as a halfling, every fifth level, we are gonna get a point in dexterity. Um, if we want to wear heavy armor later on, strength is actually going to be the best stat for us because more strength reduces the encumbrance penalty of heavy armor, which in turns actually gives us more evasion. But what I wanna do is I do wanna get a few levels in dexterity um, first. 
so that you know we have lots of evasion and then depending on our armor we may start boosting our strength a little bit later on but for now we're gonna go into dexterity um in my head i'm like oh i don't know something like 18 dexterity 18 is a good number right something like that i don't know uh frilled lizard oh like did i kill it no it just went out of line of sight Fling some rocks at it, you know, for some free damage, although it didn't end up healing up. And there we go. That's it for the floor. I don't think we missed everything. If I do control F in a period, I can get a list of everything on the floor. We're going to be okay with that. And so we'll pop down the stairs over here, dungeon level two. I'm going to sit in place, stab the heck out of you. And I like to do this where I check the different staircases because it sort of soft maps the, um, the floor. And helps to show me where my exits are, you know, if something goes badly. And this staircase here with the asterisk we hadn't visited. Okay, so we can start exploring around. Uh, we got a wand of disintegration. Only five charges. Um, but that is going to be pretty nice. Um, I, I'm wondering, we, we in our little run yesterday, we actually used wands pretty, pretty extensively. I'm wondering about a few ranks in evocations. Now I'm wondering, like, do we just go evocations in, like, Nemelex? I think he uses evocations for that. I never really played as Nem. And every god in Dungeon Crawl is, you know, is, is, is quite different. They're very unique. Um, but some gods more than others sort of become your character almost. And I feel like with Nem, that could, like, it's not a bad idea. I've never really played as Nem, so it would be a learning experience. But I've also never really played as Gozag, which is one of the reasons I wanted to do that. All right, we got an adder. He woke up right away. Adders are dangerous because they're fast and they poison. And at this point, we have no idea if we have the ability to cure the poison. This is actually, like, this scares me a lot. Um, because it could just end our run. Probably not with 24 health. But you never know. If we get a string of misses, and it poisons us early and stacks a bunch of poisons, I'm actually tempted on using a charge of our Disintegration Wand on this, just not to mess with the adder. First, I am going to step back here, just in case there's any other adds coming on you know what I actually am I don't think it's I don't think it's too much of a waste to do it um, I don't I don't want to mess with that and end the run okay there's leopard gecko again they can be fast good position over here though there you go didn't even reach us which is nice just do that make sure the rat notices us and we kill the rat just by just by throwing stones who needs a sling all right, we got another adder over here. I'm not going to do it again, because here I'm much more confident there won't be any adds. Hit. Hit. See, I am actually really highly poisoned here. No, I should have just hit him with this integration. You know what? I think I still will. Because it's possible I don't kill him in, an, in one attack. Okay. Luckily, I wasn't so poisoned and injured that the poison was going to kill me. If you try to rest and you are, you know, you're so poisoned and or so low in health that the poison would kill you, it will it will tell you rather than allowing you to rest. Um, so that's good. We are hungry, but I'm going to hopefully just be able to chop up a corpse for it. Very hungry. We might... Uh, okay. I was going to say, we might be able to get a sneak attack on this guy. But hey, there's a corpse. Mmm, slugs. Slimy yet satisfying. Goblin Corpse, Rune Trident. We're not really polar horrific, unfortunately. That's just a regular short sword. When it says something like runed and whatnot, it indicates it's magic. Now, it could be cursed. Yeah, you know what? Um, let's keep disintegrating these guys. Boom, there you go. So, we got a target of 2.0 spell casting, which is great. How's our blink looking? 12% failure rate is still pretty risky. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm betting we're going to need at least a six, actually, in translocations to bring that down. Unless, I mean, if we find a really good enchanted robe and we switch to that instead of our leather armor, then we won't need as much. But, yeah, I don't know. We're still focusing on the short blades, which I think I'm good with. Once translocations is done, I'll probably turn dodging on again. Good defensive skill. Okay, more, um, more scrolls. All right, we'll go down. I'll peek these stairs. An adder comes into view. Wow, there's a lot of adders. What? No, no regrets. No regrets. Let's use those. Oh, and that's the other staircase over here, which is always annoying because it's like more concentrated, you know, 
or, or less spread out escapes, I suppose, might be the better way to say it. Throw some stones at the rat, stab it to death, okay. Corpse, regular leather armor, as far as we know. If it, if it doesn't have a, a magic descriptor, I, it's possible it might still be a plus one or a minus one. But. Okay. Now, once we start getting a little lower in the dungeon here, one of the things I like to do is I like to clear an area around a downstair and peek it right away. Um, because in case I fall down a trap door, then I'll know where the upstairs is. But the other thing is... Um, downstairs could be... Pff, no, I know I'm holding down shift. F off. Um, I've disabled that thing like a billion times and it keeps re-enabling itself. Um, downstairs can potentially be a means of escape. It's a lot scarier, but it might be possible. All right, we're going to leave those there. I'm not, I don't want to explore this floor. Because, you know, the deeper you go, the more dangerous things are. That's just a regular dagger. Yeah. All right. Again, we'll just make sure. Okay. Um, F it. Let's do it. Oh, it missed. Okay. We don't really need it. We should be okay unless we get bad luck, but miss, 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 miss. Do they have a higher evasion? Yeah, they have three pips of evasion and one pip of AC. Like, that's the thing that's kind of scary here. We should be able to beat it. But... There's just, like, an RNG element. And one of the things, here's the thing. Let's say there's only, a, I don't know, a 5% chance of a fight killing you. 95% chance you'll win. Those are pretty good odds. But the thing is, you have so many fights in Dungeon Crawl that if you keep taking these fights with a 5% chance to lose, or even a 1% chance to lose, eventually they'll kill you. You kind of want to be in a situation where you know that, well, I mean, not necessarily the guarantee that you'll win, but you will survive. If you can't beat it, you can escape. And the problem with the fights with the Adder is they can very quickly reach a point where you can't you know, escape's not an option because of poison. So again, I just want to clear, you know, confirm the area around these downstairs is clear before I go and check them. Because the last thing I want to do is drag something up and be in a dangerous, um, you know, have extra adds. Okay, this is fine. I'm going to go and fight the giant cockroach. Excellent. Translocation's level four. We'll come back up here. All right, worms are both very scary and not scary. They can bite for up to 12, which is crazy. They're not very dodgy. They don't have that many hit points, but the 12 damage is huge. However, they do move very slowly. So the thing with the worm is if you get hurt, you can generally just run away. You want to make sure that the area is pretty clear. Okay, he can't one-shot me, but maybe with an energy boost. If it's two-shot range, you don't want to mess with it because sometimes they can get a speed boost. But we know that like there's tons of area... This would be nice to have a sling. We've got tons of space to run away. Yeah, and he's regenerating up as well. Um, I might just go and avoid him for now. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is hop on one of these downstairs, which we know are clear, and I'll rest here. Uh, in fact, I might wander a little bit here for now. That's not quite clear enough. An adder zombie. Okay. That's fine, because zombies lose their ability to poison. We'll just stab the adder zombie a bunch, slowly. Damn. Alright, level 5. There we go, we get a free point in dexterity. Every fifth level, as a halfling, we get that. Uh, which I think gave us an extra evasion pip, which is nice. Um, we are in dungeon level 4, which is often where I like to start reading scrolls. Um... Because you want to start, like, blind reading the scrolls at some point to identify them. But level 4 is where the temple can be appear. And finding a god is very important. Now, I would like to do Gozag again, because I'm curious to see what will happen. But, if there's not Gozag in the temple, we will just pick another god at that point. I'm going to eat one ration before I read, just to make sure nothing goes crazy. I will read here, even though the above floor is not fully mapped. We're going to read this... Uh, stack of two scrolls here. Um, most common scrolls are identify and remove curse, um, magic mapping and things like that, so we want to start with that. It is a scroll of identify. I will use that to identify a potion, because there's a few potions you don't want to just quaff blindly, um, and ideally we'd like to know curing and, and maybe healing as quickly as possible. So the stack of two ruby potions, I was going to say potions of curing are fairly common, so that increases the chance that we find that. That's really strong. So now we have a way to remove poison, which is really good. Dun, dun, dun. Ah, have a sip of coffee. Excellent. I have five minutes left on my timer. 
Every every time the timer goes, I'm gonna stop the episode. I'm gonna stand up and like just pace for 30 seconds, just to reset my brain as much as possible. Uh, I'll also take an opportunity to reevaluate things. That was one of the problems of the stream too, is I kept wanting to go fast, not bore people, which meant I didn't necessarily you know keep up on my all my stuff. Um, I'm not gonna read identify more um, yet because that was the only two stack I've got, unfortunately. All right, we'll pop back up here. We know there's still a worm. Going up in a level is not gonna make too much of a difference. Okay, Bullfrog, see it's red here. I actually like playing on the web version because of the way they list the enemies. Red is considered very dangerous. And um, the reason for it is, I mean, it doesn't have any AC, but it's got the EV. It can hit for, for nine damage and it is fast, which means we won't be able to run away from it if something goes badly. So I'm actually just gonna pop back down these stairs. Weirdly enough right now, dungeon level four feels a little safer. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and melee this thing. I mean, we've got more hit points. God damn, we need a better weapon. Rest, done. Getting some gold. Potions. Uh, let me come back over here just to sort of confirm this. Oh, a shop, jewelry shop, interesting. Hmm. Plus five dexterity is really nice. How much gold do I have? 173. So I can't afford any of these. Uh, protection from magic. That's amazing. We had a run a while ago that was a problem. So if I do shift K, I'll mark this as a shopping list. Um, while the dexterity would be nice now, I don't think it's worth like considering it as a shopping. We've got an artifact ring over here. It gives us the ability to maybe fly, reduce our cold resistance, give us strength. I don't think that's a winner. Now we can always find these. If I do a control F, I, I search for something like dexterity, then it'll show me the shop. But the other thing is if I hit um, shift four, so the dollar sign, it'll show me my gold, but also show me my, my shopping list. So I'll remember there's a ring of protection for magic there. And protection for magic is definitely a high priority to get in general. All right, I can check these stairs because well, technically there could be something here. Okay, didn't think so, but we'll see. All right, a little peeking. If we can get needle stuff going on, that would be really nice. There's more gold there, but it's not going to be enough to finish anything. Um, and yeah, we'll check over here as well. All right. Done, done. Oh, look at this. We fell through a shaft. Only one floor, luckily, and I know where all the upstairs are. Hey, hey, great example of exactly what we're trying to do. I don't have stealth. I probably can't stab. No. Boom, boom, boom. Um, translocation. How are we doing on that? 11% failure, because I do want to get stealth and I do want to turn dodging back on, but it is going to be really important to tr to get uh, blinking below 10% failure rate and ideally before below 5%. Thing you. Now, it clearly, okay, I don't want to fight the worker ant. Worker ants are scary because they can poison, they're also fast. So I'm hoping it still didn't quite notice us. It may have heard the noise of combat, but it still had the question mark there. Jelly's a little scary too. We're just gonna go right up the stairs and come back over here. But see that? We were able to go directly to a stair because we knew where they were. A helmet? All right, let's throw that on. So yeah, it'll give us one base AC. Even though it's plus zero helmet, a helmet has built-in AC. Wizard hats do not have built-in AC. Slight difference there, but they can have different perks and things. Uh, Hound Zombie, it's not too bad. I'm just gonna back up one extra tick because there could be more stuff in the room, but at least we have a nice choke point to fight in. All right. Uh, another wand, what is this one? Wand of Digging, okay. Which can be nice to build some defenses. Okay, Iguana can be kind of dangerous because they bite for up to 15. We gotta take that fight kind of seriously. And I'm not sure what we can do about it. Still tempted to wear wield that um, uh, vampiric short sword, but I don't think it is actually the correct answer. I definitely want to move towards the staircase. Now I don't want to move southwest here because that'll just move it closer. What I want to do is go around here. I want to kite it to back. In fact, I'm wondering if I should just go upstairs again and try my hand at fighting the worm and the something of the bullfrog. Right. They're still pretty dangerous. It'd be nice if we had a sling. We do have a two stack of scrolls. I don't know. I'd 
rather fight the worm than the bullfrog. But I think we will. We can always tomahawk it to give it some distance. Because I can't walk away from it. Okay, there we go. It's like, we were on a good run and then miss, 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 miss. Sharp blade level 5. A lot of XP for killing that thing. Level 6, we get another stat boost. I'm going to go and put one more into dexterity. And then I think from now, I'll probably start putting it into strength. Because, um, so at level... That was level... We're level 6. At level 10, we'll get another dex. At level 15, we'll get another dex. Like, we'll get a few points. There's my timer. Excellent. Good place to put in a cut, actually. Um, well, what I'll do is I'll rest. The bullfrog uh, being destroyed um, makes me feel good about finishing this floor. Because the worm wasn't quite as scary, because I can always run away from it. The bullfrog, you can't. We will finish clearing this floor over here, and then return to our descent some more. Um, and yeah, there's still that iguana, which is a little terrifying. Because, I mean, other than helmet, we haven't found anything to increase our equipment. You know, our defenses, nor our uh, attacking potential. Ignoring the vampiric sword, which I don't think we are going to wield. And we don't have, like, we burned through our disintegration uh, wands. Although, I'm pleased with it. We ran into so many damn matters. The disintegration wand was really useful for that. It's a shame that it only came with five charges. Uh, but yeah, we're going to put a cut in here. Folks, thanks very much for watching this episode. Hopefully, I know there's some Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup heads out there that are that enjoy these series. Uh, I don't know, some people don't care about the series too much, but I have fun playing it. So we're going we're gonna to see what we can do about this bad boy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.